Thought Media Network. We are a global broadcast network of positive music, media, and entertainment. Inspiring humanity's evolution along the journey of enlightenment and creating a world of love, peace, empowerment, and prosperity for all. New Thought Media Network. Positively inspiring. Hello again, dear ones. Reverend Robert with you here on Juneteenth, 2021. Happy Juneteenth to everybody. Uh, If you didn't take yesterday off as a holiday, then take Monday off as a holiday. Hey, I got my Science of Mind textbook here with me, and I am so grateful that you are here with me because this thing has been um, everything over the last 20 years in my life and and I know in the lives of many, many of you. So this is your first time with us. Welcome. This is a regular program here on the New Thought Media Network. It happens every Saturday morning at 9 9 a.m. And as you saw in our previews there, we have a whole bunch of different people that speak from and about the chapters and the writings in this book. So today is the law of attraction. Now, before I want to get before I get into that, uh, just a couple of little housekeeping type things. Number one, feel free to comment, shout out, say hello at any point in time. Um, and uh, I may or may not recognize that in the moment, but uh, we do our best to make sure we answer every question you might have uh, a bit later in our program in the second portion of, of what we do here today. Good morning, Roy. Good to see you. Always good that you are with us in Fort Morgan, just up the road from me, really. I should come say hello sometime. Uh, I hear there's a pretty good Frisbee golf course out that way. Maybe that's worth the idea. Um, And say hello to you. We'll have lunch. Okay. Um, Law of Attraction. Now, you may have seen some, uh, before we get too far into this, you may have seen some banners that said... uh, you know, congratulations uh, that Reverend Elzia was going to be doing this talk today. And uh, this was set up a while back that, yes, it's Juneteenth and he wanted this talk. And well, <laughs> he did such a great job of being attractive uh, that he's actually part of a much bigger program this weekend, the Juneteenth Weekend Symposium. It's actually happening right now. Uh, or later today, you can still register honoring freedom dot website. Uh, there's a package where you can watch the programming over a 90 day period. So you can look back on uh, what you missed yesterday and what happened last uh, yesterday in the program. And uh, our dear brother, Reverend Elzia is one of the featured speakers there today, uh, along with a whole host of, of wonderful people that are putting on this program. So I encourage you to check that out if you're not already. Uh, or if you haven't already heard about it. So, LZ, Reverend Z and I switched. And I was going to do next week. He was going to do this week. We flipped. He's going to pick up next week. He'll be with us for that. Uh, And I get to talk about the law of attraction. How cool is that? I like that. Uh, So, I don't know about you, but when I walked into a religious science church, and my first science of mind church uh the last it it wasn't that we were pushing the law of attraction nobody was out there rah 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 law of attraction law of attraction law of attraction that's just not what i stepped into when i first found my way into a science of mind center now that changed, however, because it wasn't long after that uh, that we had the phenomenon that is the movie The Secret. And that resurgence, and along with that, 
it didn't take very long being in a science of mind center to learn a bit more about Abraham Hicks and be introduced to what Abraham Hicks was doing. There's a lot of people, you can do a quick search on YouTube, and there's a lot of people that are uh, aggressively uh, critical of the law of attraction and the way it's taught and the way that it appears people are financially benefiting from, quote, the law of attraction. Put all of that aside. Put all of that aside. Because this predates all of that. This predates all of that. So, chapter 18, Science of Mind, The Law of Attraction, starts on page 294. Uh, there are about six, six sections in this. Thought atmosphere, attraction of personality, attracting friends, attracting success, no failures, no personal responsibility. That's an interesting section when we get there. Because generally we say this is... a a, a philosophy of personal responsibility. So we're going to look at what Holmes is saying in that specifically. And then uh, the final piece is the law of correspondence. So again, we're going to go through these um, and we're going to kind of, <clears throat> I'm going to bounce around for you a little bit because I got a couple of ideas that I'd like to share. And if at any point throughout the next, oh, 20, 25 minutes or so as I uh, bounce around here, this chapter. Uh, if you have questions, I invite you to share them in the comments. Uh, even if you're watching this at another time, if you're watching the replay, feel free, drop the comment, uh, drop your questions in the comments. You may find that others have those same questions and I answer them throughout our experience today. And if I don't, I'll be happy to check back in and connect with you and answer the questions you may have specifically around this. And I want you, everybody to know this has been a really, really fun experience so far, right? We're right just about the end of June, um, just about the middle of the year. We've got half under our belt and half to go. Uh, we're not quite halfway through the book, though. Uh, but that's all right, because there's a whole bunch of this book uh, that is definitions, the glossary, the concordance. Uh, the book ends right about there. <laughs> this is the side. We're, this is all stuff we're not going to study. So if we look, yeah, we're about halfway or so through this mighty work. Let's get into it. The basic law of attraction summed up in a handful of words at the bottom of page 294 there. We are either attracting or repelling. Now this and what he's referring to is the power of thought. We are either attracting or repelling, no matter what we do. And we have heard this said in so many ways throughout the book and throughout popular culture. All right. you're, you're either, uh, everything is either a cry for, for love or, or it, it, right? We're always in this process of attracting and repelling pushing something away. No, I don't like that. No, that's not my style. I don't drink coffee personally. I, or attracting, calling in to our lives. Now we can be in that place of attraction passively or actively, consciously. By the activity of our thought, this is on page 295 now, by the activity of our thought, things come into our life and we are limited only because we have not known the truth. We are limited because we have by own, only by our own beliefs that we have not known the truth. And I remind myself of this often that the only thing that can really get in my way is me. Someone might think they can get in my way. They might think that they're, they're, they're a roadblock in, in my path. No. I might see someone as a roadblock or something as a roadblock in my path. Yes, but that I can change. In my prayers, in spiritual mind treatment, in my prayer work, you will hear me speak to that place that is, we, we, we do not recognize, I don't, anything as a detour, as a limitation. It's an opportunity. And I'd like to go from A to B. But sometimes you got to take the circuitous route 
to get, excuse me, to get to the real goods. There is no power, this is also on page 295, there is no power in the universe but ourselves that can free us. Someone may help us on the road to, real, to realization, but sustainability and permanence can come only through the consciousness of our life and our thought. Through the consciousness of our life and thought. Substant and permanence can only come through the consciousness of our life and thought. Are we, are you, am I, demonstrating these principles day by day, moment by moment, in everything I'm doing. That is the call, I believe. That is my personal mission, I, to be that. Now, there are times when it doesn't happen. <laughs> of course, there are times when I fall off the wagon. There are times when I fall off the, 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 whole, uh, the, the path. I recently was in a wonderful multi-day argument with an old friend, with a friend from before, from a friend in, the, in my history. And it's interesting because I've been looking for vindication. I've been looking for somebody to tell me I was right about him all along. Because the relationship we have now does not is not built on friendship. That was that was destroyed. I thought there was friendship there. I came to find I don't I don't believe there was. Know the truth. This is on two ninety six now. You're going to hear more about that. To reduce the whole thing to its simplest form. I'm sorry. Let. Right before that, know the truth and the truth shall make you free. We've all heard that, right? Know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So I really just got to, you know, by the, by the, the easy teachings of the law of attraction, by the cheap teachings, by the get rich quick teachings, all I got to do is sit around and visualize and harmonize and align myself and know the truth that I am abundant, I am prosperous, I am rich. I've been saying it for 20 years. I don't, I still haven't, I've, I've done plenty of meditations and I've still yet to have God just drop a gold brick in my hand. But I've had plenty of great ideas. I've had great inspirations in those moments. I have attracted into my life through those meditations, amazing opportunities and experiences to continue to live the life I live and prove these principles through the daily demonstration, through this community, through this organization, through what we're creating here. So at top of 296, he does bring it down to reduce the whole thing to its simplest form. Whatever one reflects into mind. Now he uses a capital M mind there. So remember that means that we're talking about God. We're talking about the divine here that what in its simplest form, whatever one reflects into mind tends to take form. He doesn't say has to, doesn't say must, doesn't say will. He said tens. Because our mind, we have the ability to influence the divine mind. To reduce the whole thing to its simplest form, whatever one reflects into the divine, into life, into our workplace, whatever I reflect into, tends, has that potential, and is most likely, but doesn't necessarily take form, tends to take form because we tend to hold on to those beliefs. We tend to hold on to what we, what we bring in. I've heard it said that one of the greatest measures of anyone is their ability and their willingness and their openness to change their opinions, to change their mind, to change, to, to be willing to say, presented with evidence other than what I have always known, I am willing to reevaluate my position on this point and perhaps change my mind because my mind tends 
And what I, what I believe also is, is we tend to be creative beings. We don't, our tendency is not to just to, to distract or destroy or tear down or rip apart. And we can get trapped in that belief system that the way to get to the top is to pee on everybody else's parade below us. What the law of attraction wants us to know, and what I think, and part of the reason why I believe this is all in here, is to help us see that it is through our the power of our own mind and our own thinking that we create the conditions to allow the good we desire into our lives, to call it in, to create the environment and the conditions where our good may manifest, may flourish, may proliferate. Pl yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> may multiply. And on 298 still, this is third paragraph, one of the first things to do is to love everybody. I love this passage has been circled and starred and highlighted many, many times. One of the first things to do is to love everybody. If you have not done this, begin to do so at once. There is always more good than bad in people and seeing the good tends to bring it forth. Love is the grandest healing and drawing power on earth. It is the very reason for our being. And that explains why it is that people should have something or someone to love. A life that is not loved has not lived. It is still dead. Love is the sole impulse for creation and the man who did and the one who does not have love as the greatest incentive is in their life has never developed the real creative instinct. No one can swing out into the universe without love for the whole universe is based upon it. It all comes down to love. Who you loving today? How you loving today? Where are you showing your love today? Could you use a little more love today? People are dying for real human interest, for genuine friendship, for someone to tell them they are all right. And it is a law that the one who sees what they want to see, regardless of what appears, will someday experience in the outer what they have so, so faithfully seen in the within. We must hold true. I believe it was last week, Ray Sherrill had that great, the great question the really great quote in this book <laughs> to desert this truth in the hour of need is to prove that we do not know the truth. That was last week. Ray Sherrill used that quote because it's one of the best ones in this entire book to desert the truth in the hour of need is to prove that we do not know the truth. What if the hour of need is, is that place where you're right now saying I've had enough. I've had enough of the, um, the injustice. I've had enough of race-based hatred. I've had enough of gun violence. I've had enough of all those things that we see and not ignore them. I'm not saying bypass. I'm not saying ignore them. Not, but we put more of our focus on what is good, on the good that we can find and, and highlight that and bring that forward. There's enough people out there to tell everybody how bad it is. We do not need to add into that mix. We are here to add into the mix the good to help people see there is another way to believe. We cannot afford to find fault. This is all on the pet top of page 290. It starts at the bottom of 298, but it's all really on the top of 299. It is a law that the one who sees what they want to see, regardless of what appears, I want to experience peace in my life. No matter what appears, I'm going to, I'm looking for peace. I want to experience love in my life. No matter what comes my way, I'm looking for the love. I want to experience prosperity in my life and abundance and financial freedom. No matter what comes my way, I'm looking for the abundance and the prosperity and the financial freedom because they have to be there somewhere. Actively attracting. The one who sees what they want to see, regardless of what appears, will someday 
experience in the outer what they have so faithfully seen in the inner. Yeah, it doesn't look... There are things out there that do not appear to be peaceful. And I got to find the peace within me around that. There are things out there that feel unjust and inequitable and I have to find the justice and the equity within me as well and then be willing to take the inspired action out in the world because faith without works is dead folks we cannot afford to find fault to hate or even to hold in mind anything against any living soul even the past president even the current president your neighbor that flies the flag you don't like. We cannot afford to find fault, to hate, or even to hold in mind anything against any living soul. The God of love cannot hear the prayer of the one who fails to love. I think you can see how imperative it is for us to be in that place of love, to come from love. At the bottom of 299, but there is a divine principle and what it does for us, it must do through us. I believe if you're in this room, you've probably heard that before. This divine principle of creation can only do for us what it can do through us. What we are willing to do how we are willing to take action, how we are willing to be of service to the evolution of human consciousness. Our part in the demonstration is to set the word in motion, thus compelling through the law of subjectivity, the result or manifestation. Our part in the demonstration is to set the word in motion, Thus, compelling through the law of subjectivity, the result or manifestation. Compelling that there must be a, a demonstration of our word, of our prayer. That is what the science of mind is. This chapter is not truly about the law of attraction, by the way. This is pure. This, this, is, this is that bedrock gold. It just happens to have this name built around it, the law of attraction. All right, over onto page 300. We're going to get, uh, we're going to rip through a whole bunch of stuff here if you're following it along in the book because we want to get through these next sec this next section, um, these next several pages in the next 10 minutes or so. Throughout this entire thing, what I believe Holmes does is he lays out a system of thinking. He truly does what I see so many religious scientists doing, and that is teaching people how to think, not what to think. Throughout it, he does give us some pretty definitive ideas, however, of what works and what has proven itself. On top of 301, we must be specific in what we do, while at the same time never outlining how it shall be done. The both end, right? We tell God what we want, but we let God take care of the how. We're specific in our prayers and what we desire, but not in how it must happen. So we're specific that we want to experience greater prosperity, but we're not specific that it has to come through this job or that job or this business or that avenue or this guy or that girl. Remember, we're dealing with intelligence it is going to, it, God, intelligence, the divine, it is going to evolve our concept exactly as we involve it. If you have faith in God, you have experiences that provide you opportunity to grow a deeper faith in God. If you have doubt in any of this, you are going to be given opportunities to find that. And if you choose to follow that path and to continue to follow that path and look for the doubts and look for what's wrong and look for where it's broken, you will continue to find those. We have to involve the good in order to evolve our good. Get it? We live in mind and it can return to us only what we think into it. No matter what we do, law will always obtain. 
God has given us a power and we must use it. All right, let's get rid of the patriarchal. You have a power for good and you must use it for good. You're being called to at least. We can do more saving the world by proving this law than, than all that any charity has ever given it to it. We can do more good by proving this than any other charity. We are in the attracting success section, Roy. Sorry. Um, you may have one of the combined books that has the 26 edition and then the 38 edition. And I, um, I don't recommend those uh, only because it, of this. Can, it makes it really hard to sometimes follow along. But um, I'm in the law of attraction. Uh, it's the attracting success section. And we are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine paragraphs in, 10 paragraphs in. You have a power for good that you must use. We can do more good towards saving the world by proving this law than any other. And Holmes throughout parts of this, he, he, he can, he provides us I, in some ways. I think parts of this chapter were put together. This is part of where it was. His thoughts were collated and put together. I don't know that he sat down and wrote us this chapter, right? Um, and I think some of some, because some of this sounds like his speech and some of it sounds like his writing and some of it doesn't truly sound like Holmes at all. Know that no matter what others may say, think, or do, you are a success now and nothing can hinder you from accomplishing your good. All the power of the universe is with you. Feel it, know it, and then act as though it were true. Now we're into the no failures section. And for those with the uh, page nation, page 303, break down everything except the recognition of the one perfect power, which is not contingent upon any place, person, condition, time of year or anything else, but itself. The one who wishes to make a demonstration must clear up their own subjective atmosphere. The reason being that they may be objectively making statements, which the, his subjective thought may be denying. In this way, we often neutralize our word as fast as it was as, as fast as it was spoken. How many times we we say this? I want more of this, but I know that I really can't have that. I want more of this, but that's not truly who I am. I want more money, but I've just I've never really been able to put it all together. When Jesus, I'm oh, sorry. So we erase any idea of failure. Now here is where it looks as if, okay, sorry. Wrong note. So people come into this philosophy and we're taught to use affirmations through programs like law of attraction books and, and, and movies and such. And we say the we say the these affirmations, but we don't truly believe them, and we're negating as we go. And and I don't care how long you sit in an easy chair and pretend that you're driving a sports car. That is not going to manifest the atmosphere in your mind to, to attract the conditions that will bring you to that place of having a sports car or a million dollars. So. People start to think, well, I'm just, I'm lying to myself. I'm just lying to myself. This isn't really, what they, right? there's the doubt. Now we have, now we have the downward spiral of the doubt. Push all of that aside. And we have a way to do this. In science of mind, religious science, we call it argumentative treatment. In the midst of a prayer, if I run up against a disbelief, I stop and I state the disbelief. 
Holmes at the top of 304. Thought is very subtle, and sometimes when you're making such an affirmation, arguments will rise up against it. I am abundant. I am prosperity. No, you're not. You're broke, and you can barely pay your bills. I am abundant. I am prosperity. No, you're not. You're broke, and you can barely pay. Boom. Stop. We stop right there. Stop at once and meet those arguments. Refuse to accept them. We speak back into our words the intelligence which we are, and backed by that greater intelligence of the universal mind, our word becomes a law unto the thing for which it is spoken. There goes forth from this word the power of the infinite. Stop. No, that is not the truth of me. The truth of me is I am a divine expression of God. I am here and whole and complete on this planet. And in that, I have access to and an opportunity to access the unlimited resources of the, of the divine. And that includes financial prosperity and abundance. I'm, and I am attracting more and more money into my life day by day by day by day. And if anything says, oh, no, not really. Oh, I don't know. Eh, eh, eh. Stop. No, that doubt is not the truth. That limitation is not the truth. What is the truth? Start to state the truth again. I am a whole complete expression of God. I am an abundant, prosperous expression of God's life here on this planet. I have access to God's bank account. And I write checks from God's bank account. I draw my abundance from God's bank account. However the prayer needs to be for you. You've heard this. Treatment is a thing of itself. It is an entity of infinite intelligence, life, and action, and nothing can hinder its operation but unbelief or a lack of me adequate mental equivalent. This is that place where people say, oh, I don't know what I want. Like, get clear. You, you got to get clear on what you want. I just want to be happy. What's okay? That, what's that mean? I just want to be prosperous. Okay. What's that mean? You get clear. You focus on what you want and let God take care of the how. We said that a little while ago, didn't we? You focus on what you want and let God take care of the how. Never depend upon people or say that things must come from this or that source. I spoke about this a little few moments ago. It makes no difference where things come from. Truthfully, does it matter? Does it matter how the zeros and the ones and the decimal points get in your bank account? I don't, not really. Never depend upon, upon people or say that things must come from this or that source. It makes no difference where things come from. Say that they are and let them come from where they may. And then if something occurs which points to a place for them to come from, it is correct to say, if this is the place then there is nothing which can hinder. And if this isn't the place, I will be guided to the next great opportunity to experience. Plain, simple, easy. And I don't have to get all attached. What if I lose my job? Some, another one will show up. If I live this, if I believe this, but if you're in a place of saying, I lost my job, I can't find another job. It's so hard out there to find a job right now. If you're in that spiral of doubt and disbelief and lack and limitation, that is what you are creating, my dear friend. The good news, that's the interesting news. The good news is that it's not hard to change that. I say it all the time. You hang out around here long enough, we're going to convince you of your greatness. We are going to sell you on your uh, own ability to be magnificent. Nothing moves but mind. This is the bottom of 304. Nothing moves but mind. God makes things through the direct act of becoming the things which God creates. Now, remember, we have the ability to be that creative principle. This is what we do. For our thoughts become the thing. Thought, uh, uh, sorry. Again, some of this doesn't always feel like it was Holmes. <laughs> the thought and the thing are one in reality. What a person has and what we are is the result of the subjective state of our thought. He brings it all back down to thought. I'm going to scrap that and move to here. There are points in our lives 
where we may not like what's going on. But those are moments of past indiscretion. Those are moments that reflect a slip in our in our thought process and our consciousness, not right here. Right? If, if you if you had the ability to instantaneously demonstrate every limiting, doubting thought you've ever had, life wouldn't work. How many times have you thought, man, I hope I don't end up in an accident today, or, or this is a dangerous intersection, I got to be at, or that's not how it works. It tends, the tendency is to the good, is to, is to creation, is to life. Life is prime. On 305, Holmes talks about no personal responsibility. And I want to talk about this before we go today because this can get a little confusing. What he writes is, no matter how great a responsibility may rest in that which must be done, never let one moment's responsibility rest in your own thought about it. Okay, What he's saying is, we have to let go of the belief that my thought alone controls what's going on around me. That to which the mind gives birth is, and every idea is bound to produce an effect exactly like its cause. So again, we have the tendency and what we release into the field is a both and. Right? We have to be in that place of knowing that there are the appearances to the contrary, but there are, is also the truth. And we have to hold to that truth. A little bit farther down, he writes, the responsibility of setting the law in motion is ours, but the responsibility of making it work, meaning the law, making it work is inherent in its own nature. Again, once we set the law in motion, the law takes over and must demonstrate to some accord. It's a some accord. This is incredibly important. So he's not talking about we have responsibility for everything that's going on all around us all at the same time, but we have personal responsibility. We, so we don't have a responsibility for that, for the, but we have a responsibility for what we put into that. We have a responsibility for what we add to that soup. Do we want to add the stones and the lies and the doubt and the fear and the lack and the limits? Or do we want to add the abundance and the prosperity and the love and the compassion and the light and the, I think you know where we're going with this. So in the next section, what he writes is the limit of our ability to demonstrate depends upon our ability to provide a mental equivalent of our desires for the law of correspondent works from the belief of the thing, but it is within our power to provide a greater mental equivalent through the unfolding of consciousness. And this growth from within finally leads to freedom. What we demonstrate today, tomorrow, and the next day is not as important as the tendency, which our thought is taking. The dominant attitude of our mind. If every day things are a little better, a little happier, a little more harmonious, a little more health giving and joyous. If each day we are expressing more life, we are going in the right direction. How cool is that? And farther down on page 306, as we contact this higher principle of our own lives, which is perfect and complete, needing nothing, wanting nothing, knowing everything, being happy and satisfied. And as we daily meditate upon this indwelling God, we shall acquire a greater mental equivalent. It's the self-eating cycle. Hey, wow, I did that. I can do that. I love to do it again. I can do it even better. I did it again. I did it again. I did it again. Here we go. Pray, pray unceasingly for your own good, for your own freedom, for your own understanding. 
And the more you do, the better you get. And the better you get, the more you receive. And, and because we get clean, we get clear, we let go of the old limiting beliefs. We let go of those old friends. And we let go of the negativity that comes with old ar with arguments about things that will not that are that are the big things versus changing what I can change and being an agent for growth and evolution where I can be. Think, feel, this is on 307. Think, see, and feel activity. Anyone that says this is a philosophy of the mind and we're to be in consciousness and watch the world change around us and watch the conditions change because we changed our consciousness only has half the picture in this philosophy, folks. Holmes says it again and again and again and again and again and again. We have to also take action. We don't, there are people that don't like to point to that. But here's, right? think, see, and feel activity. Activate radiate life feel that there is that within which is the center and the circumference of the universe the universe is the result of the self-contemplation of god the universe itself is a result of the self-contemplation of god our lives are the result of our self-contemplations and are peopled with the personifications of our thoughts and ideas accept this without question for it is true <laughs> See, there are times where Holmes just says, this is the way it is, folks. <laughs> and if you don't like it, there's the door. Accept this without question. The universe, our lives, are the result of our self-contemplations and are peopled. Our lives are peopled with the personifications of our thoughts and ideas. Did you ever outgrow somebody? We all do, right? Maybe it's an old lover, boyfriend, girlfriend, maybe a colleague, a, a business partner. That It was a great business. Nothing went wrong. Nothing went bad. We just grew apart. Happens all the time. And here's the, here's the kicker. You ready? Right in the middle of that 307 there, top of the third paragraph. Nothing is real to us unless we make it real. Nothing can touch us unless we let it touch us. Refuse to have the feelings hurt. Refuse to receive anyone's condemnation. In the independence of your own mentality, believe and feel that you are wonderful. This is not conceit. It is the truth. What can be more wonderful than the manifestation of the infinite mind? As you. Before we wrap up here today, folks, please do remember that there's always time for questions and comments, and you're welcome to drop any questions you might have in the comment box of wherever you're watching, whenever you're watching. If you're with me live here, I'll address those. And there's something that I didn't share from the book that I do want to share as, as sort of a weekly reminder. Life lies open to me. Rich, full, abundant. My thought, which is my key to life, opens all doors for me. I am one with infinite divinity. I realize this unity. I proceed on my way as one who knows that God goes with me into an eternal day of infinite advantage. I have only to open the portals of my soul and accept that which is ready to express through me. Today, today, I fling these portals wide. Today, I am the instrument through which life flows. Took just a little, little liberty and made this quote gender neutral. You can find it in, it in our reading from today. Oh, close my book. Let me find it for you real quick. It's actually on page uh, 305. And 304, 305, there's three paragraphs there that uh, are more of a prayer than they are a teaching. 
Life lies open to me, rich, full, abundant. My thought, which is my key to life, opens all doors for me. I am one with infinite divinity. I realize this unity. I proceed on my way as one who knows that God goes with me into an eternal day of infinite advantage. I have only to open the portals of my soul and accept that which is ready to express through me. Today, I fling these portals wide. Today, I am the instrument through which life flows. I will drop that meme as a comment in this uh, on this stream. Oh, maybe I can do it right here. I wonder if I can do it. No, I can't do a photo from here. Um, I'll drop that as a, a photo on the comments to this broadcast uh, shortly after we're done. Uh, and I'll put them on the New Thought Media Network's Facebook page as well. Uh, you'll be able to find that out there in the world. A couple of quick questions coming in. I have a friend who believes in something so different from mine. Matter of fact, her beliefs are a threat to my beliefs. Even though she technically is a is a threat to me, she continued. Uh, it uh, okay. So uh, Roy, if okay, and continue. She continues to reach out to me, and I continue to accept her friendship. Okay, I think you might be saying technically she is not a threat to you. Physically, if you're in phys if you're in physical, if you're in har on harm's way, uh, call someone <laughs> official, law enforcement. Uh, if you feel your physical, uh, your physicality is is in harm's way, or uh, if she's a threat to you that in that way, please uh, reach out for help. As far as her beliefs being different from yours, uh, there are times when people leave our lives. Um, because of our shift in life, our change, our growth, and um, and their unwillingness to th see things differently. I, it, earlier in the talk, I spoke about like for me, spiritual maturity is in a big way being willing to look at things differently when presented with different information. Um, and <laughs> um. You know, I, I, okay, Roy, so it sounds a little crass, but the truth is she's the one that's creating a hell in her own life. She's creating a, a, an experience of hell in her life because she's overly concerned and overly obsessed with your sexual identity. Mm -hmm. I, I, she's afraid for you, right? She's, she's going to tell you she has fear for you. She's afraid for you. Truthfully, Roy, if she cannot accept you the way you are, you're better off continuing on your journey and continuing to grow and evolve. And, and let your life be a demonstration for her to witness. I don't mean you have to run away and... and unless it's a physical... Unless there's a real physical threat here, dude. In which case, get out of there. Um, but... Beyond that, you're, there's a great opportunity for you to be in a place of, no, you're not attracting the wrong thing here. No, no, no. Yeah, see that? Okay. That, thank you for saying that because that is the metaphysical slap in the face that we don't do to people, right? You got to remember, she's got stuff in this too. What you want to do is be in a, a, a center of attraction for peace, for understanding, for open conversation, be the place where rather than make her wrong and you're such a whatever word you want to use, right? Rather than making her wrong, bless her on her way, be the demonstration that is good for you. And then let her witness that demonstration from afar and that may change her mind or help her to learn something a little different. Now, if she keeps coming at and keeps coming at, you can say, hey, 
I need to create a boundary here. This is not healthy for me and my mental health. This is not healthy for me and my spiritual health. And so I'm going to put up a barrier here. If you're not willing to honor and respect and accept me for who I am, then I can't let you continue to knock on my door. I can't continue to let you put stuff on my Facebook wall. Those are private conversations. Um, if she is willing to have the conversation, then we have to be willing to say, hey, I, I trust that she is in a place of spiritual growth where she'll be willing to change her mind when presented with different evidence, evidence of who you are as a person, of how much, how much love I am sure there is within you and, and how wonderful of a being you are and all the gifts you bring to this planet. I hope that helps, right? And for anybody out there, myself, all of our ministers, all of our practitioners, everyone here at the New Thought Media Network, we all do private spiritual mentoring sessions. We um, They are on a fee basis. Um, everybody does it a little bit differently. So if there's anybody in this network that you resonate with, you, the, any of you, anyone watching this, if there's anyone in the network you resonate with and you would like to be in a deeper discussion around uh, specific concepts and ideas that are happening in your life, by all means, reach out to us. Um, send an email, info at ntmedia.org. Send an email to prayers at ntmedia.org. Um, I'm in the wrong banner, so I don't have those things right in front of me. But um, reach out to us, and we're all more than willing to schedule some time, get together, video conference, telephone call, whatever, and work through these things for any of you out there. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Prince. Reverend Prince Flea Easton with us in the house today. I saw you slip in a little while ago, sir. Glad you're with us. Thank you for adding to the, our, our experience here this morning. People are places placed in our path for growth, not theirs, but ours. And we can't beat this person over the head telling her she has to grow. And, all right, quick analogy. Then we're going to get out of here because, oh my gosh, it's almost top of the hour. Uh, I've never been one, I'm not a big flower gardener. I'm not a big gardener anyway. But my wife has always been somewhat of a gardener and we're always a little bit more in expanding and she's getting me into it. And this year we had an opportunity and she planted sunflowers. Now, I've seen fields of sunflowers. I've seen sunflowers on other people's properties, but I've never like witnessed the growth and the whole process and the whole everything, right? Here's what I didn't think of. Sunflowers, and my wife did, right? Sunflowers shade out what's underneath them. So you can't have a high light, uh, a plant that needs a lot of light down below your, your sunflowers. And your sunflowers go quick. They sprout up real quick, get big, thick, tall, real quick. And they block out everything underneath them. You are the sunflower. And your growth, by its very nature, will leave others in the shade. Will leave others behind. Will leave businesses homes, families, I, anybody that ever said the, the road of spiritual learning and growth and exp expansion and, and getting to spiritual maturity is easy, uh, hasn't truly traveled the road. Because there are, there are things that must be left behind or let go of in order for us to experience the grand and glorious vision that is our lives. That's the good news and the interesting news. How about a quick prayer? Life is good. Life is great. I am in that place. Mm, I'm going to come back to, I'm going to come back to Ernest's words of prayer. I know that life lies open to me, rich, full, abundant, I know my thought is the key to my life and it opens all doors for me. I am one with infinity, divinity. 
I realize this unity and I proceed on my way as one who knows God goes with me into an eternal day of infinite advantage. I have only to open the portals of my soul. And so I do. I open the portals of my soul and accept that which is wanting to express through and as my life. This day, today, I fling wide these portals. Today, I am the instrument through which life flows. Today, I am the place where God shows up. And I know that same truth of each and every one that hears these words. That you are the place where God shows up. That you are a place of where infinity and divinity meet. And that all the good within you is rushing forth to be expressed. Rushing forth to be loosed into the world. And that is good. And that is very good. And so I am grateful for all that has transpired. For the, the fun, the love. And whatever comes next. Life is good. Life is great. I let it be. And so it is. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, dear ones, for being with us this morning, for being here with me, uh, for sharing your love, sharing your questions, sharing your light. So please share this with a friend as well. And thank you for sharing your financial gifts, offerings, donations. It has been another great uh, we just keep, keep getting more and more people that are dropping some uh, donations in those buckets. So please do that. And uh, in that vein, let's say thank you to some people uh, that have made committed donations and, uh, and click the make it a monthly donation on their gift. Mm -hmm. next week. We'll see you again soon. Or next time. The dogs are happy. Good time today.